Hi everybody, I'm Terry Stiles. I'm with Jim Hughes again this week. Hey, my well, good we're, we're friend together and all the time, right? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Oxford News this week. And, and on this week's news, a $61 million system for first responders. Concerts in the Park has a lineup and the search has ended for Oxford schools. All that and more, the Oxford News begins right now. The Oxford School Board of Education is about to end their search for a new superintendent of schools. Interviews for the final three candidates took place last week, where each finalist took, a close, to an hour, took close to an hour to present leadership transition plans, answer questions from the board and of themselves. The three finalists are Dr. Tanya Milligan, who is the Executive Director of K-12 Teaching and Learning at Columbus City Schools, Dr. Uh, Mr. David Raleigh, Superintendent of LaRue County Schools of Kentucky, and Mr. Cormac Lynn, who is Superintendent of Schools of Catholic Diocese of Saginaw. All three presenta presentations stressed many of the preferred qualities that the community and schools developed together in earlier phases of the search process, such as trauma-informed training, regular communications and engagement with the communi community, and the presentations are available on Oxford Community Schools website, and the live stream of the April 2nd meeting can be seen on Oxford Community Television YouTube page. The official superintendent selection and announcement will be on April 23rd, so keep an eye on us. Jim? And the Oakland County's communication system for first responders is getting a $61 million upgrade. The investment in an improved radio system and dispatch operation will allow staff to communicate across the state. The Motorola radio system is integrated with Michigan Public Safety Communication System replacing a 20-year-old technology which created gaps in communication and dead spots across the county. Oakland County Executive Dave Coulter, the executive, announced the change at the Southfield News Conference last month. The, mo the money, which was mainly from 911 surcharges on phone bills, as well as a $5 million from a county commissioner's general fund, will pay for over 6,000 radios and upgrades uh, to 20 911 dispatch centers. The new handheld radios have GPS locating systems, an emergency button, and a recording system, and two additional channels. Colton said the new radio system will allow for improved communication as Oakland County agencies prepare to assist in the upcoming NFL draft security in Detroit later this month. Terry? April showers may not only bring flowers, but in Michigan they bring traffic cones too. And the village of Oxford is about to see its fair share of orange barrels and cones. Starting April 15th, the village office parking lot will be under construction. The village and the Downtown Development Authority and Chamber of Commerce employees will park across West Burdick in the northeast, uh, excuse me, northwest village parking lot. Limited parking will be available for residents and those coming in for permits. The project is expected to be completed by the end of May. During construction, there will also be underground work done in the area, so at times the exit to West Burdick will be closed, leaving only Hudson Street as an exit. Towards the end of the project, there may be a few days when the entire lot will be closed. The final impact will be on the in-person drop box for water payments. The box will be removed during the project, but bills can be paid by mail, over the phone, or online. For additional information, visit the Village Facebook page. Jim? The Oakland County Sheriff's Office headquarters is now the home of the 100th Save a Life Station. The Alliance of Coalitions for Healthy Communities installed the station on Friday, the 29th of March. During the celebratory event, the Oakland Community Health Network and Sheriff's Office, the Alliance of Coalitions for Healthy Com Communities, was launched with the support of Oakland County's Office of Substance Abuse. 
services to provide harm reduction, recovery support, wellness prevention, education for anyone affected by substance misuse. The Save a Life station boxes provide a community with a free access to Narcan, a nasal spray, opioid, opioid or overdosing, also treatment takeaway safe disposal kits. Testing strips and inter informational resources are also available in the boxes. The 100 stations are refilled on a weekly basis and have saved 137 lives in the la less than a year. The Alliance began installing their stations in April of 2023 to reach a goal of 100 box goal throughout the county in the first year. There's also a box at the Oxford Township substation locally. Terry. In an update to a story from last week, Jennifer Lewis's fundraiser is now getting some extra support from Guido's Pizza. The Oxford Guido store, own, uh, store owner, Sean McGuire, will donate food and gift cards for the Euchre event dinner to support Lewis, a longtime Oxford Township Parks and Recs coach battling appendicidal cancer. Next week, McGuire will offer additional support through a Dine to Donate fundraiser Monday through Thursday. 15% of the total for customers who use the code LEWIS when ordering will be donated to LEWIS. Guido's and the Oxford Township Parks and Recreation Department are united in the same cause to help LEWIS focus on her fight. The dinner and Euchre Tournament front fundraiser will take place Friday, April 26th. For more information, contact Dan Sullivan at oxparkrec.org. Jim? Always a sign that summer is on the way and warmer temperatures. Hopefully, the Downtown Development Authority Summer Songs Concerts in the Park Series. Looking forward to the lineup this year. It's been finalized, uh, it's being shared with the community. On Thursday nights, a free concert, um, uh, March 28th, at the DDA announced the nine bands that will perform on Thursday night. On June 13th and through August 15th, this is a year's theme is a summer to remember. A tribute uh, to the decades from swing to Frank Sinatra, Motown to the Beatles to the 80s hits, contemporary pop country music as well. The concerts offer something for everyone. Some of the bands have returned from years past while others are brand new. The night begins, Oxford Sick Pizza Company selling pizza, breadsticks, and beverages starting at around 6 p.m. and the DDA strikes up the band. 6.30 family night is August 8th with a DJ dance party, all time hits spanning the decades to a uh, full list of performances. You can go to the DDA's Facebook page. You also can pick up a summer schedule magnet from the DDA office, which includes dates for all the downtown summer activities. We're always happy when we see those concerts. Sure. Back to you, Terry. Well, hop to it. Easter visited Oxford last week and a rainy day didn't dampen the holiday spirit. The Oxford Township Parks and Recreation Department's Easter Bunny Bonanza was initially postponed from last Saturday to Easter Sunday due to the weather. Still, there was a holiday fun inside the Senior Department uh, Center for those who could not make it the next day. Kids visited with the Big Bunny and picked up goodie bags. And on Sunday, a new wave of kids took Seymour Lake Park park by storm and when the siren sounded the race around scooping up thousands of colorful plastic eggs began. Once the field was clear the Easter helicopter flew over and dropped thousands of ping pong balls onto the crowd where kids raced to clear the field of the orbs to trade those in for a bag full of goodies and a photo shoot with the bunny. A good time was had by all so it's beginning Jim. In our Behind the Lens segment, almost in an addendum, uh, addendum to the uh, last story, uh, we're going to leave you with a series of photos from our own C.J. Carnacchio and also a montage of Easter music. Everybody, uh, a bit chilly on Sunday, had a great time, but here's something to look out for up and coming on OCTV. <laughs>
And there you go. A nice little montage with CJ's top photos. And yeah. I it was cold Sunday, okay? I went out on my first uh, video shoot, and I needed a little practice, I guess, right? But it was kind of entertaining to see the uh, helicopter fly over yeah. and drop the... I thought they were marshmallows, but I guess they were little ping pong balls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think marshmallows are a better idea. The ping pong well, balls... Well, I think maybe the little ones might grab them up and maybe... Eat. So maybe you can't really eat a ping pong ball. So. <laughs> That's true. Anyways, everybody had a good time. It was a good thing, and yeah. uh, we're uh, we're happy that we were able to borrow some of CJ's uh, photos for. Yeah, Island. he's always good for a good photo. And we're, now it's beginning. It's really nice to see that all the activities are starting to happen now. Oh, it's no really doubt. cool between Easter and the East in parks and recs, and then we're talking concerts about the concerts in the park that are going to happen and. Right. Reading month is over, but I'm still reading. She's reading. I interrupted her <laughs> read the other day when I called her on the phone. She would listen to books on tape. Anyways, hey, we're going to take a slight break here. Yep. Uh, I know Dave's Kenny's all ready to go. Up uh, next, Dave Kenny will have auto talk and science and the news. I'll take a look at sports. Terry will have our last story today, yep. as we also enjoy that on Oxford News this week. Welcome to this edition of Auto Talk. I'm Dave Kenny, and this story is taken from Automotive News. Buick is giving its Envision Compact crossover a makeover for the 2024 model year with exterior styling that more closely resembles the rest of the brand's lineup, the new trim level, and more than 20 standard safety features. The freshened Envision will get its design cues from the Buick's Wildcat electric vehicle concept whose sculptural lines checkmark headlamps and lower mounted grille have made their way across the portfolio. While short of a full redesign, Buick said the updates reflect a major freshening of the nameplate second generation and are the first changes since its 1921 redesign. Buick owners expect beautiful design, purposeful technology, and safe, efficient vehicles, Duncan Aldred, Vice President of Global Buick and GMC, said in a statement. We've raised the bar with the new 2024 Envision with all the, those attributes and more for the best compact SUV Buick has ever delivered. Regular production began in China at the end of March and the Envision will go on sale in the U.S. this summer, a Buick spokesman said. The vehicle comes in three trims for 2024, Preferred, Sport Touring, and Avenir. Pricing will start at 37 $1,295 for the preferred, rising to $48,395 for the Avenir, Buick said. The middle trim, which replaced Essence from 2023, will start at $39,795. All prices include shipping. One third of all U.S. Envision sales in 2023 were the Avenir trim, the third consecutive year of increased uptake for the high-end version. Another third included the Sport Touring package, which was available an option for the preferred and essence trim levels in 2023. The popularity of the Sport Touring Package uh, prompted Buick to make it a separate trim level for 2024, said Marcus Boyd, marketing manager for the Envision. Buick carried, out, carried over the two-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine on all three trims, pairing with a nine-speed automatic transmission for 228 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. All three trims come newly standard with all-wheel drive and offer three drive modes, tour, sport, and off-road. The Envision will offer two new exterior colors, Calypso Blue Metallic and Smoky Amethyst Metallic. The ST and Avenir trims get 20-inch wheels standard, while the preferred trim gets standard 18-inch wheels. A 2024 Envision ST will cost about $3,000 less than a similarly equipped Essence trim with the Sport Touring Package in 2023, said, Buick said. After factoring in the cost of the ST package and technology package, that's now standard on the ST trim. On the inside, all three Envision trims come standard with a 30-inch infotainment and driver information screen that can be configured based on preferences as well as ambient lighting that offers 126 color combinations. The Envision comes with Google built-in technology, but also has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring capability. 
All Envisions will have head-up display and a nine-speaker Bose Premium audio system that were standard only on the Avenir trim in 2023, Buick said. All trims come with a leather-wrapped steering wheel, while the ST trim will offer a flat-bottom steering wheel. Buick simplified the available Envision configurations in part by offering more standard features and limiting add-ons to just a comfort package and a moonroof, Lloyd said. Both options are standard on the Avenir. The Envision offers the most safety features of any Buick on the market today, including more than 20 standard safety and driver assistant features, said Jessica Korinsky, the Envision's product manager. Newly standard are advanced adaptive cruise control, intersection automatic emergency braking, front pedestrian and bicyclist braking, and rear cross traffic braking, she said. Wow. Well, that's it for this edition of Auto Talk. I'm Dave Kenny. Stay tuned to Oxford Community Television. On October the 4th, my daughter was diagnosed with a rare malignant rhabnoid tumor on the spine. When I received the diagnosis with my daughter, my hope was gone. When we first made it to St. Jude, my baby couldn't sit up on her own at all. The tumor had pressed up against her spine to the point where it basically paralyzed her. She couldn't feel her feet or anything like that. And just to see her start to make those steps after treatment. Take your time, one step at a time. It was just like a miracle. It was amazing. I was like, thank God for St. Jude. Great to have you back on Oxford News this week, Oxford Sports. Right now, we're looking forward to some softball and baseball coming up here on OCTV. Although multiple matches were postponed in the first week of the spring sports season, that didn't stop some of the strong openers from the Oxford Wildcats on, on Tuesday. The 2nd of April, the Oxford boys lacrosse team took down Linden in their home opener with the uh, score of 13 to 3. Girls lacrosse, unfortunately, fell on the road versus a strong Hazlitt team. That score there, 14 to 2 on that same day. But the Lady Wildcats were both triumphant on the soccer field as both the varsity and JV teams won their road openers against Goodrich. The Martians uh, couldn't put down the points against either team. Uh, with the games ending 2-0 and 1-0, and and respectively. During the Oxford Community School spring break, though, the Oxford High School baseball team traveled to sunny Clearwater, Florida. Oh, boy, that would had to be rough. For spring training, 18 players practiced together and played three scrimmage games. Uh, they even squeezed in some time to shoot hoops on the rainy day. The JV and varsity baseball seasons are just now starting up after the postponements of last week's matchups. So stay tuned in the coming weeks for updates and game recaps. Again, we're looking forward to a lot of those games here on OCTV. That's sports. I know Dave Kenny's got one more story coming or one more segment coming up. Terry will have the last story. And you are watching Oxford News this week. Welcome to Science in the News. I'm Dave Kenny, and this story is taken from New Scientist. A possible impact crater discovered in India may have been caused by the largest meteorite to strike Earth in the past 50,000 years. The meteorite could have caused a fireball, a massive shockwave, and wildfires that would have spread through an area inhabited by people from the Indus Valley Civilization thousands of years ago. It would have been definitely equivalent to a nuclear bomb, but without the radioactive fallout, says Gordon Osinski at Western University in Canada. The 1.8 kilometer wide crater called the Luna Structure has been known to locals in Gujarat state for some time. 
Researchers had examined it before in the belief that it was from an impact, but nothing came from these studies. Recently, K.S. Sanjan Kumar at the University of Kerala in India and his colleagues returned to conduct a more in-depth research. Geochemical analysis revealed a high proportion of iridium in the soil, which suggests the impactor was probably an iron meteorite. The team also identified other materials characteristic of meteorites, including wasite, erstonite, hersonite, and uval spanile. David King at Auburn University in Alabama, who wasn't involved in the study, says that while the geochemical analysis appears to match, the team hasn't completely proved that this is a crater. To do this, they would need to find superheated rocks that melted due to the energy of the impact, he says. It's not that I'm suspicious that it isn't a crater, but it would be nice to have the standard line of evidence in shocked materials, says King. Such materials are difficult to find, though, and the area where they would be in the lunar structure is usually underwater. Sanjin Kumar and his colleagues were only able to dig a trench during the very short dry season, but he says they plan to search for shock materials in the future, calling this study the tip of the iceberg. Osinski says that despite the lack of shock materials, he's convinced that the lunar structure is an impact crater due to the other evidence. The authors have done a great job with the samples that they have, he says. Radiocarbon dating of organ organic material underneath the debris layer from the presumed impact showed the plant material to be about 6,900 years old. But in ongoing work that isn't yet published, Sanjin Kumar and his colleagues ran optically stimulated luminescence tests on the soil layer, which revealed the last time that the minerals saw sunlight. Th these tests, which are on the presumed pieces of the meteorite itself, rather than on organic material underneath the debris layer, have refined the date to roughly 4,050 years ago, says Sanjin Kumar. That would put the timing of the impact around the period near the end of the mature phase of the Harappan civilization in the Indus Valley. The impact would have created a shock wave that reached about five kilometers away, says Sanjin Kumar, and ejected material that could have created wildfires that affected a much larger area. Osinski says the ash and particles kicked up by the meteorite would have dimmed the sun in parts of what is now India for days. In the near vicinity, it would be a fireball, then complete decimation for kilometers, he says. The crater is just over 100 kilometers from the Dalvira archaeological site, which was an Arapan city at this time. If there were people living in that area, there would have been some serious casualties, says King. Zanjan Kumar says that this might have been the only impact of such magnitude that complex civilizations on Earth have ever witnessed. Wow. Well, that's it for this edition of Science in the News. I'm Dave Kenny. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. And in this week's last story, our paper cranes for peace. Four Oxford sixth grade students folded over 300 paper cranes during their academic break for Oxford Middle School librarian Catherine Willoughby. She took those paper cranes to Japan over her spring break. Willoughby was a social studies teacher before becoming a librarian and was inspired by the Children's Peace Monument in Hiroshima Memorial Peace Park. The monument is dedicated to Sadoko Sasaki, I think, a 12-year-old girl who folded nearly 50 
1,500 paper cranes before she passed from leukemia in 1955. She and her family had survived the detonation of the first atomic bomb, and she made it her mission to fold the paper cranes to try to have her wish for good health granted. The now standing Children's Peace Monument is dedicated to her and other children who died of radiation poisoning. Willoughby thought she would see if any students wanted to make paper cranes so she could take them to place them on the monument to honor its message. Clara Amshed, Zofia Williams, Anna Ambrosio, and Alandrea, I think, Firth, I hope I didn't mess those names up, took um, the task on by storm, folding more than 300 cranes, which today symbolizes health and peace. The girls were motivated by the message of the cranes and the importance of their sharing their relations. Willoughby plans to take a photo after she places the cranes in order to show the students how their hard work sends an important message to the rest of the world. Wow. That's heartwarming, isn't good, it? Good mission. Good I message. Love now, that. is that called origami or what? Uh, yeah, I think so. It's origami. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Good, what a mission, yeah. and uh, you know, to have all that support uh -huh. and. Uh, Again, you know, the sadness and then happiness out of sadness, yeah. I would think. And you know, it's funny, when I was initially reading that story in my office, we have two cranes that are mating out Outside the studio, and they're, they're, I don't know if you've heard cranes, but they're very, very loud. Oh. And they've been singing back and forth to one another for at least a week. And while I was reading that, they were calling back and forth to each that. other. And it made me think yeah. of that piece and, and that they were supporting that story. Very good. That's pretty cool. That's how you should, Corey. You should sing, to your, sing back and forth, right? I should? No, we know oh, if you're courting somebody. <laughs> oh, if you're courting. I, sure. I don't know. Well, I think that's what I did when I married my husband. You started we singing both sang. And we both sang. He's actually started playing his guitar and singing, and that's what made me fall in love with him. I thought it was pretty cool. I think I, had, I, <laughs> I, I, think I maybe had a few guests run away from me when I started to sing. So I'm just saying. <laughs> Don't serenade anybody then. <laughs> Anyways, we did mention this in the uh, in the in the break that we normally never take because of, uh, that was in between uh, the behind the lens. You were right about that. But uh, reading month is actually over, but yes. you can still read, and we are still mm -hmm. encouraging anybody mm -hmm. that wants to uh, maybe yep. come on down. And uh, we have a lot of reading uh, facilities and we'd like to highlight you. And I know you're yeah. reading on the car still, too. Yes, right now I'm in Egypt and Africa. Mm -hmm. So I've been away. going around the world in the last, I've just, I counted it up yesterday, and I've gone through 15 books since January. Nice. And that's just going back and forth to work, which is 13 minute drive. Provided I don't and call And getting you ready. Yeah, don't, <laughs> you called in the middle of a really important story today. <laughs> But reading is, you know, it takes you everywhere. But we do have a story called, uh, excuse me, a program called Read Me a Story. And if you want to come down and be one of the readers, it's for, it's geared towards kids from like right. kindergarten to third grade. Oh, so, very good. Yeah, that's a lot a of stuff thing. happening here. Yep. Anyways, I think we put the wraps on this one. Do you, would you agree? <laughs> we did. I think so. Okay, and you're going to go read All the news this. for this week. All the news for this week, right. You know, Terry, OCTV can be viewed on Spectrum Charter Channel 191. I know you knew that. Sure and can. Channel 99 on the ATT Uber system. Also, check us out on YouTube, mm -hmm. Facebook, Rumble, Roku, and I always forget the other one. Memory Stick or something? Fire Stick. Fire Stick, something like that. I'll get it sooner or later. Yeah. If you have a show idea or like to volunteer OCTV, you can give our office a call. 248-628-9658. Ask for Dave. A very special thank you to the producer and director, Kyle Snage. Our news writer extraordinaire. She mm -hmm. does it from afar. Sure. Allison Miller, editor Cal Snage, station manager Terry Styles for everyone here at OCTV. I'm Jim Hughes, hoping you have a safe week. I invite you back next time. And again, Terry and I will take a look at Oxford News this week. Take care.